What's up YouTube, Zero here, and today I'm going to show you an amazing bow build in Ghost of Tsushima. So first I do want to say if you enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it, 97% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel, it really does help out me and my channel. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first, the charms. The charm of Izanagi, which landing a headshot has a 40% chance to return an arrow. The charm of Negahayahi no Mikoto, deal moderate bonus damage while at full health. Yuriko's keepsakes, two of them, arrows have a 15% chance to poison enemies. And two charms of fortune, effects with a percent chance to occur are 50% more likely to occur. Now let's take a look at the armor, and of course we have to go with Tadiori's armor. Increases knocking and reload speed by 30%. Increases total concentration time by 2 seconds, and headshots restore 50% of the concentration meter. This is an absolute must-have armor if you are going for a bow build. So now, let's talk about the build. Let's get into the charms and why they work so well together. Then I'll talk about the location of everything and something you need to do. And make sure you don't miss to make this bow build even better better and deadlier. So first, why does this work and why is it so good? The two charms of fortune combined are going to give me a hundred percent increase, more likely to occur for charms with a percent chance. So what does that do? Well, the charm of Izanagi, which is 40% chance to return an arrow when you land a headshot is now 80% chance. So that is four out of every five shots that is a headshot, you are going to get an arrow back, which is absolutely awesome. You won't have to be scavenging the field for arrows as long as you are hitting your headshots, you're going to be getting most of them returned to you. Yuriko's keepsakes. So if you aren't hitting your headshots or maybe you're up against some stronger enemies, your arrows are going to poison and those two combined without the charms of fortune is typically at 30%. But we add the two charms of fortune in and now we're at a 60% chance likelihood that we are going to poison enemies. And what that can do as well is it can terrify enemies, which is absolutely awesome. Making enemies run away, not having to use our arrows is even better because sometimes it is hard to find arrows if you are missing your shots. Some of us may not be perfect hitting headshots, and you're gonna see in a couple of seconds me miss a headshot that I thought I was going to get, but I did not. Now the last one, you can really play around with this. I went with the charm of Nigahayahi no Mikoto, and the reason for that is you deal moderate bonus damage while at full health. When you're hitting enemies with arrows, you're most likely going to be at full health. A lot of them aren't going to be able to attack back. As you can see in these situations, none of these enemies have bow and arrows, so I'm kind of just on top of this housing, picking them off one by one, so I'm dealing bonus damage if I am not getting those headshots, those automatic kills, I'm going to be able to get some pretty easy kills. On top of that, there are going to be moments where you're going to have to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're going to have to kill enemies with your katana. So I like dealing that extra bonus damage with my katana. So now let's talk about where you can get these charms. And then I will talk about what you absolutely have to do. You can miss it, and I don't want y'all to miss it later in the game as you are progressing because it is huge for a bow build. So the charm of Izanagi, you're gonna find at the Winding Mountain Shrine. The charm of Nigahayahi no Mikoto, you're going to find at the Frost Cliff Shrine. And I am gonna put links in the description if you need help finding those. Yuriko's Keepsake, both of those you're gonna get from Yuriko's Quest, which is the Proud Do Not Endure and the Art of Seeing. And the Charm of Fortune you're going to get from a couple of missions, Peace for the Divine and Friends in Passing. Now, Tadiori's Armor is a mythical tale that you're going to have to do. Of course, it is the Legend of Tadiori, and you are going to find that near the Rustling Bend in Act 1, so it is an early armor that you can get. It's a longer mythical tale. It definitely took me a little bit longer than the other mythical tales, but if you are somebody who wants a bow build, this armor is definitely for you, and you're going to absolutely have to get this armor. 
So if you've waited around this long, now I need to tell you the one thing you can miss in this game that I don't want you to miss. If you're doing a bow build or just in general, this is something that nobody should miss because it can really help you out as you go through the game. And it is a mythical tale called the Curse of Uchitsune. Now for this mythical tale, you actually unlock a longbow. It is easily missable and it is something that is crucial to anybody who's using a bow build. But as you'll see here, I'm pulling out a longbow and I'm going to kill this brute. But it is something that you can miss and I don't want y'all to miss it. Make sure you get on the Curse of Uchitsune, which is in Hiyoshi Springs in Act 1. Very important to do because it can help you out in the game. It gives you another weapon to your arsenal and it also helps you take out brutes and stronger enemies a little bit easier. You get some more powerful arrows and with the longbow you can actually get headshot kills on enemies that have a helmet on which you are not able to do with the half bow. So that's just something that I don't want y'all to miss. I want y'all to make sure you are getting the curse of Uchitsune no matter what you're doing in game. Go out of your way, get that bow because it is extremely important to the gameplay and going through this game so you can have another weapon to your arsenal. So let me know what y'all think about this bow build. I'm telling y'all, if you love using a bow and arrow, it is absolutely awesome. I definitely love using this build, especially with the charm of Izanagi and the two charm of fortune. I am getting all of those arrows back and I am just able you can see there I'm terrifying my enemies too making them run away which is awesome and then here I'm just gonna watch this mongol get thrashed by this bear the bear spots me but no fear because I have this bow on I have my concentration up and then an easy headshot as this bear lands at my feet so let me know what y'all think of this build have you used it do you love using bows in this game do you attack your enemies with bows a lot or do you prefer another method to get up on those enemies well i hope y'all enjoyed this video and again if you did feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more ghost of tsushima content well until next time